All right, here's a quick update on patch one. It's June 13th. In uh, patch one, the clear winner right now at least is the 2266 Kissamore. It's really starting to spread out. I just did a sort of marathon uh, vine bearing effort. And then I drenched uh, some beneficial bacteria um, and some humic and fulvic and did some pruning. Um, overall, the plant health is pretty good. We had some uh, hot weather again uh, a few days ago. And so you can sort of see where that hot weather zone was is where I, you see scorch. And then it's been cool the last two days and the new growth actually looks just fine. And then we kind of have the forecast right now is sort of perfect weather, like mid eighties for the next seven to 10 days, mid to high eighties, which I think is, uh, is pretty good. And as I mentioned in the last video, this plant is gonna end up being really big by the time I set the pumpkin. The very first pumpkin I've had on the main, which is, this is really kind of surprising, is this guy right here with approximately 24 secondaries behind it. So it's pretty unusual that the first pumpkin uh, that you get is with that many, with that many secondaries behind it. Usually you get one somewhere around 14 to 16 secondaries which would have been like right there so i'm i'm happy with it it's it's a big plant so the 2245 is a different story if you remember i had the vine split issue here in the front um that's basically been resolved the uh you know the secondary growth kind of looks funny because you got all these big secondaries and it looks like no secondaries because that is one of the secondaries that's come out um, but there are secondaries coming they're just going to take a little more time. There's the spot where I had to cut it. Um, and unlike the 2006, which I'll show you in a minute, um, at patch two, I did not have a pumpkin set upstream. So I will not have a pumpkin on the main. The pumpkin will be on a secondary that I've sort of turned into the main. I don't think that's really a big deal. Um, it's about the same age as the 2266 Kissamore over there. So I think that thing opens in less than a week. I don't know, I'm not great at judging, uh, I'd say less than a week, um, which is good because that still hits the before um, the summer solstice target uh, and lines up with the way offs that we would be going to. Um, on the negative side with this plant is it just really hasn't grown much. It's not nearly as big. The leaves are kind of even more heat sensitive. Um, you know, I got this, really you know a few of them it's like a really aggressive curling condition where you know you want the leaves to come up and kind of do this sort of cobra but they're curling back on themselves so it almost seems like excess uh nutrients but i'm not fertilizing at all so and i did a soil test and all the soil balance for this soil and um you know it, it was a little high in a few things from from a lot of compost years past but uh still not really sure what to make of it last year's plant kind of acted similarly in this spot um, so it might be time to you know not grow in this patch for a year um, but what happened with last year's plant is i just kept going and it kind of just rebounded and ended up being okay it just got a really late start so i'm gonna run with that theory and uh and keep keep on running it um over here in patch one i have two other plants uh let me show you these two plants um, were over here in a, not in the main patch. Um, it's kind of uh, just a secondary, but this plant has been amazing. This is from an, another local grower in Napa, Andy Marden. So this is a 1548 Marden. I don't think I've, I've shown the plant, but plant health, it's getting hardly any love at all. Um, it's leaves look better. It's almost not heat sensitive at all. Um, has a ton of great secondaries. Doesn't have quite the same growing area. Um, and then we just pollinated a couple days ago. And look at the stem on that. Huge stem, good looking pumpkin. Um, starting to train the vine to make room for where that pumpkin will be. So despite it getting basically no love or attention, hardly any vine bearing, no nutrients, not much of anything, uh, it, it's really turning into a nice plant. And I think that that'll end up being a a good pumpkin.
the final plant over here is a 1469 young and this plant kind of like the kissamore plant the 2266 has really long flat vines small leaves beautiful pattern um, again it's not getting any love but it looks really good uh, this is a virgin uh, piece of ground that we haven't ever grown in before so i think that probably helps so everything's been going great until i came to over here today and i've never seen this before but half of the crown has been eaten away here by what i can only guess is a gopher we did find a gopher hole here normally we see a big mound uh, which we don't hear, but uh, it looks like he came out of the ground and started to chew on the mane or on the crown here. Um, and it's, you know, kind of, it's flowing water now. Um, you can see like leaves every so, you know, so many leaves having been affected. Um, I don't know if the whole thing's going to go, but you know, we're not bearing vines over here, but many of the bottom vines will kind of root themselves. So there's some amount of rooting going on. So I don't know, maybe it ends up uh, being going all right and, and making it to the finish line. We'll have to see, but it's a bit disappointing. So we got the, uh, the trap set up. Um, another little pumpkin here that I've got in the tip, starting to train the, the main um, to manage uh, where the pumpkin will lay just assume that it's gonna make it. Got a few cucumber beetles out here. That's never something you wanna see. But these are just out here in the field. They're not, like I said, getting much attention, but we'll see what happens. All right, it's the next day, June 14th at patch two. This is the 2006 wolf plant. And let's walk in. I'll show you what it's looking like. So under the canopy, you can see the crown's getting pretty big. You can see all the vines are buried. Um, as the vines start to get big, there's some, some areas where I need to come back and do a little bit more burying just because the vines get bigger than bigger diameter than they were when they were buried. Um, and I do have some more bearing to start doing over here. But uh, so I'll flash back real quick to a short video of how I started to reposition the, uh, the vine here. And if you recall, this is what the one that was deadheaded because of the split. So things are looking better, but I'll flash to that video real quick. Um, and then uh, I'll show you the pumpkin. I'm at the 2006 wolf plant and after a lot of thinking, I just don't see any scenario where I want to keep this crack, even if I'm just, you know, letting this part of the vine grow and, you know, feeding energy back to this pumpkin. So my decision is to cut it right there. All right, it's been cut. Job's done, a little bit sad, but I'm glad that the decision's been made and now I just move forward and let the plant keep growing and uh, hopefully in a couple weeks, it'll, uh, it'll all be behind us. Um, I also use the chunk of the main and a couple of the established leaves um, that I'll send off to Western Labs uh, for some tissue analysis and, and that gives you a snapshot in time of um, what's going on in the plant, which, which can be helpful for adjusting uh, your feeding schedule and whatnot. Um, but the main issue I have now is this pumpkin um, I wasn't planning on really keeping, um, and now it's starting to grow and starting to get big, and you really got to do a good job of setting up the vines to accommodate for this kind of enormous thing to, to form in this area. So. I need to start moving the vines in a way where that pumpkin is completely out in the clear. Um, normally, you would have already been doing this, but because I really wasn't planning on ever keeping this pumpkin, I didn't. So now, you know, I've got vines buried over here, so I'm gonna actually have to break roots, unfortunately, and slowly start moving this part of the main vine here, move it out that way so that it opens up 
the space here. So yeah, this is a challenge and something I'm not gonna try and accomplish in one day because I just wanna do kind of little incremental movements. Um, but that's the plan. I'm gonna start doing that. All right, here's what it looks like after that first move. So main vine right there, it used to be right there. But the next step is I gotta start getting this pumpkin up off the ground because otherwise it'll grow and the vine will be down below. So the roots that are in this node and and that node, and you can see how enormous the root already is right there. That's a really big, thick root. There's just no way that you keep that root and the root that's moving around. See this root up here on the top that's starting to go over? That's what you wanna see, but where it is, you can't have it because this that vine's gonna end up like a foot or two off the ground, probably more. So fortunately that one, you just gotta break and then I'm gonna slowly start moving the vine and the pumpkin up off the ground just to prepare for growth. All right, so that root's been broken. I put a little foam block underneath it and then I did the same here. And all this stuff is kind of lifting. So all these secondaries near it will not be able to do the normal rooting. Um, and right now the pumpkin is kind of off the ground, just sort of hanging there, which is, is not great. So I'll put something under there just to support it. So this is day eight or nine, and the pumpkin is now um, actually starting to grow. Like you notice it each day, you you can see some of the growth. So that's good. Um, for reference, is my hand still not very big, um, but I think the shape's pretty good. Looks um, not perfectly symmetrical, but pretty darn good. Got a good kind of normal size stem. And uh, as I mentioned in that, that other video, I'll kind of keep in the heat of the day, I'll keep moving this vine out that way and training these vines out that way. Um, and then I'll, I'll be able to sort of get, um, you know, a good amount of open space here for it to grow. And then I'll allow some tertiary or third stage growth to come and fill this area in here. Maybe even we'll curve these vines out that way and then the same all out what what is kind of becoming the new main um go off this way and do the same um so this was the best plant uh because of that crack and having to deadhead it um you know it's maybe not as big as i as i would have hoped and it's doesn't have as much uh growth behind the pumpkin um but i think that based on what i'm seeing with the pumpkin itself I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. We'll be terminating vines pretty soon over here in this corner um, and uh, over in that corner as well. All right, here is the 2560. Uh, 2560 plant gets the patch award for the week. It's, I'd say, grown the most. It's the biggest plant. Um, it has a ton of secondary growth. I mean, you can kind of see, I'm sort of staying zoomed out so you can see the size of it. I'm pretty happy with how it's going. Uh, it's going to be the biggest plant, I believe, in terms of length and number of secondaries by the time I pollinate the what I hope to be the keeper pumpkin. So I have a pumpkin here, which I would say is officially pollinated. Really good shape no complaints about it other than and i got another one here other than i i really want as much i've never grown a plant this big or had the potential for this plant to be this big so i really want to see what a really large plant like uh, i haven't counted but let's see if this ends up if this pumpkin ends up being the one and it ends up being the one that takes and pollinates I would have close to 30 secondaries behind it, um, which is a ton. And I'm hoping that this thing opens uh, middle of next week, which would still give me, I think around 115 days before the Half Moon Bay way off. And that's by my book, plenty. So definitely happy with the 2560 Ginger plant looking really good.